back to Forbidden Knowledge News. I'm your host, Chris Matthew. Today my guest is Adam Shell. First, just a couple of announcements. If you'd like to help with our film fundraiser, we have links in the description. You can also help by watching the Forbidden Documentary Occult Louisiana on Tubi and multiple streaming platforms. And get a Rockfin Premium Membership at rockfin.com slash FKN+. Finally, always be sure to download our podcast episodes directly through Spreaker. Today I want to welcome Adam Shell. Through a tremendous series of coincidences, he found his way into the California cannabis industry. Within three years, he built up a statewide distribution company. He then became very interested in psychedelic mushrooms and their therapeutic benefits. Along with a scientific partner, he developed the microdosing brand Brain Supreme. Adam, welcome. How you doing? I'm good, man. Excited to be uh, talking with you today. Yeah, man. Great to have you. I've definitely been looking forward to this one. Not only have we done many shows here about psychedelics and their incredible benefits, but I also have many years of firsthand experience that I owe much of what I'm doing right now and where I'm at in my life to. So today we're going to once again explore the incredible powers of the fantastic fungi and... We're going to get a new perspective from you, Adam, but this is your first time on, so before we get into this, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what got you involved. Okay, cool. Well, um, good to be with you, man. I've been binging on the show um, since I knew we were going to book about a month ago, so I really enjoy it. I'm excited to be speaking with you. Uh, I connect really well with your audiences because this is kind of my my wheelhouse. I kind of consider... um, psychedelic microdosing psilocybin microdosing to almost be the spiritual uh, armor that we need to kind of survive to this uh, insanity this melee of insanity that we have going on these days yeah, man. it just helps to kind of cut through the cut through the bullshit and still connect with you know god and love and the things that are essential okay so my name's adam um i uh, own a psychedelic microdosing company called brain supreme brain supreme.co i've been in the space for about six years we've been uh, researching and developing um i was a college athlete i was a big 10 linebacker came out of that pretty injured got very into yoga uh, yoga led me to um uh, i moved to los angeles and basically all the things that made me kind of an average big 10 linebacker i was a little bit you know by those standards slow weak um funny, flexible, and Jewish made me like a great yoga teacher in LA. So I ended up, I ended up working with a lot of clients, celebrity clients, all kinds of things like that. Um, started coaching people and started using some cannabis when I was working with some clients that had cancer that got me into the kind of the little bit, the cannabis world. And then, um, through a whole series of coincidences, I had written a novel, um, uh, as I was teaching yoga, I was going to graduate school and I was getting a master's degree in creative writing. I wrote a novel called Tomato Rhapsody, comedic historical fiction, and it, like, to everybody's surprise, it got purchased in four days, and it sold for a really big sale to a division of Random House, but between the um, sale of the book, the manuscript, and the release of the novel, the, we had the 2008-2009 housing crash, and then the publishing world fell apart, uh, the number one, two, and three at the division of Random House I was with all got fired. And then it culminated with Michael Jackson dying the day my novel came out. So it was like, poof, it was like nothing had happened. So 10 years of work were up in smoke. I w- went back to teaching yoga and I was doing some writing for my dad's company, uh, global leadership and training. And I started, a so- I had a very young uh, child at that age, about three years old. And I started a soccer not-for-profit in this area that we were living in um, Southern California and we were going to this really interesting progressive school at the time. This is back when you could use the word progressive, but we were going to this very interesting school back then that had um, a lot of celebrities and influential families. And I had started a soccer not for profit. My three year old at the time seemed really athletic and into soccer. And we had a coach that visited us and from Spain. He liked him quite a bit. He stayed with us for a while. And the soccer not for profit had a lot of influential families. And one of the dads um, on the team said, Hey, man, I like the way you get things done. You got these families, you got this coach. He said, What do you do? And I said, Well, he said, Come to this meeting with me. So he introduced me to the California cannabis industry. And literally at that time, the bar was so low that basically competent and honest was the new extraordinary. 
So I went from being, I went from being like totally down on my luck and broke and having to reformulate my life, um, you know, in my kind of early forties to, um, to within a couple of years, I was running a multi-million dollar cannabis distribution company up and down the state. I had vans and security and a hundred farms on the Rolodex and uh, great buyers throughout Los Angeles and life was going great. But I was like, I, I appreciate cannabis. It's good medicine. I get it, but I'm not really like a cannabis guy. You know, I'll smoke a blunt with some on sauna night with some buddies um, from time to time. I appreciate it as medicine. I know it's excellent for people, but when I was really cash positive, I had, um, developed a relationship with uh, um, a dad buddy of mine who was very familiar with um, mushrooms, mushroom foraging and psychedelics. He came from th- a European guy. He came from three generations of mushroom foragers. They always had a country cabin. And I started asking about psychedelics and he'd mentioned, oh, that he's grown some psychedelic mushrooms before. Um, he gave me some. They were incredibly effective and wonderful. And I said, hey, you know, I've got this idea about approaching microdosing as like the ultimate form of supplementation. What do you say? And he said, let's go for it. So I basically bankrolled him. Uh, He created a grow. We started to develop all different kinds of strains and experiment with different strains until we got to what we felt was the kind of perfect strain that we developed for our microdosing brand. The company went through several iterations. Eventually, we came upon the name Brain Supreme, and we found our niche, which is life optimization, performance. Um, really approaching microdosing as the ultimate form of supplementation. And that's the genesis of the brand. And we've like officially been out there now for about a year and word's starting to spread. Feedback's been great. And thank God things are going really well. Excellent, man. Great introduction. And I always like to start out these shows by saying that I know that this type of medicine is probably not for everyone. And you have to be extremely respectful discerning and understand what you're dealing with whenever you're going into anything like this, especially if you're going to be doing the macro dosing route, which is the route I went. We're going to explore both routes today, but tell us a little bit about your understanding of what is going on in the human brain whenever we are taking mushrooms, because there's really little known about what is occurring in I know that you've done limited scientific studies into what you're working with, but do you have any understanding of what could be going on in the human brain? So I I like to provide a caveat whenever I do these podcasts that, and uh, look, since COVID, you know, I've been pretty aware for quite a while. Um, I lived not too far from the World Trade Center, so shit didn't smell right from that from the beginning, and that started a whole process probably similar to many of your listeners and so forth. So I'm down all the rabbit holes. But I really like to give a caveat here is science has its place. It might have a tremendous place. But I, especially since COVID, I'm, I appreciate some science. But I really, the thing that's unique about myself is I've had over 2,500 conversations about microdosing and in much more microdosing, but also some about macrodosing. So I'm a, I don't know, there's better science people than me. There's people who know mushrooms much, much better than me, like, you know, credit and humility where it's due. But in, I don't know if anybody alive has had more conversations about how to microdose effectively than I have, because I've hand sold about half the products that we've sold over the number of years. And I've been, um, learning from all this information and data. So in terms of like the science, uh, on Spotify, you can find Dr. James Fadiman, F-A-D-I-M-A-N. He's the OG of the microdosing space, and he's got the science. Uh, Huberman, on his podcast, you can find on YouTube, he has a great podcast on psychedelics, and he has great science. Um, Stamets, before he sold his soul to the pharma devil, um, he has some really effective science out there. That's a whole other story. We can dive into that later. But um, so there's great science out there about what happens with the brain. But here's what I can say in a nutshell from, and I've had many more conversations about how to microdose than probably most of those guys. They've collected data more so than I have, but I've had direct conversations. It moves the brain in a beneficial direction, whether you're cognizant of it or not. In the vast majority of people, it seems to create um, new neural pathways that move you to a place of, of like happier homeostasis. It 
it up levels your operating system, your neurological operating system to just the place of, even if it's just a little bit incrementally, of, of greater well-being, of greater happiness. It creates neuroregenesis, so areas of the brain that have been damaged. Um, it helps regenerate those. And a lot of those got damaged when you were much younger and much happier. So my feeling is it's firing, it's, re, it's refiring uh, and rewiring some, some old wiring of when you were younger, innocent, more happy, had a less cynical view of life, you know, early childhood and so forth. So from a scientific standpoint, and that's somewhat backed up by the data, um, but it just has this incredible, mysterious quality of moving the brain in a beneficial direction, whether you're aware of it or not. Right. Um, and that's the magic of psilocybin. Mm -hmm. Now, I am from an pretty much old school perspective of this you take a five grams and you go within and you make discoveries about yourself and your your consciousness you heal childhood trauma which i did all these things even came into contact with spiritual entities which we'll talk a little bit about your understanding of what's happening in those situations but i've even interviewed dennis mckenna who is a proponent of the macro dose but I understand most people aren't going to even be able to handle that. Most people can't even get past, you know, a gram or two. Then it brings up things that a lot of people aren't ready to handle all at once. And if you're taking a large dose, oftentimes it's going to throw a lot at you at one time. Talk a little bit about the benefits of microdosing versus macrodosing and if you have any thoughts on the larger doses great okay great question and it kind of sets the whole context for the conversation so mushrooms can be grown a little bit stronger these days particularly if you're dealing with penis envy they have like kind of like a 1.5 x if you have like a well if you have several well-grown strains and you have well-grown penis heavy figure your dosage is going to be about 25% more potent with penis envy. But for historical reference, we're going to call the therapeutic macrodose, tripping balls, whatever you want to say, we're going to call that five grams or 5,000 milligrams. Okay. One gram is a thousand milligrams. It's kind of easier to have the conversation in terms of milligrams as it relates to microdosing. So 5,000 milligrams is the historic macrodose. Microdosing happens at the sub 10% level of that. So for most people, microdosing is somewhere between 100 to 400 milligrams, with most people's sweet spot being 200 to 300 milligrams. So for instance, the Brain Supreme um, are, are three most, our three traditional kind of therapeutic supplement lines are Genius, Feel Good, and Athlete. And those all have 100 milligrams of active per capsule with then 400 milligrams of complementary ingredients. Black stack is our extra strength, and that has 250 milligrams of active ingredient. So that's all within the sweet spot of the micro dose um, in relationship to the macro dose. Now, the way I like to say it is that micro do macro dosing flips the lights on so that you see the room. You get the there's an expression in Buddhism that once you hear the Dharma, the die is cast. Like once you hear the truth, you can't go back to untruth. You can try to convince yourself, you're, but you always know that you're kind of fooling or lying with lying to yourself. So the macro experience turns the metaphoric lights on and you see the pattern, the, the pattern of consciousness, the pattern of your own behavior, um, the patterns that are happening in the world around us, the patterns of your own psychology. You kind of understand these patterns a little better. Um, and what the micro, but then the lights go off, the experience ends, the lights go off, the lights, you know, turn back off, but the, the, you understand the pattern of the room a little bit. You've gotten a glimpse of it. Microdosing is just keeps very gently walking you towards that light yeah. again. So one can flip the light switch on the other can, whether the light switch has never been flipped on or not, the microdose kind of gently keeps walking you in the direction of the light, which, and what does light mean? Light means your wholeness, your wellness, your ability to perform at the highest level, your ability to live authentically, your ability to, to love, give and receive love, your ability to make connection with other people, your ability to understand your intuition and ascertain truth. All these things are benefited by both the macro dose and the micro dose. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, you were talking and maybe you've had some 
darker experiences with Mac. I've had them all. I just want to comment on one thing. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So I just want to comment on one thing. Um, uh, the film, uh, easily available on Netflix and other, uh, I think actually, I think it's only on Netflix because I think Netflix might have been part of the production. Um, How to Change mm-hmm. Your Mind um, by, um, oh, good heavens, I'm forgetting the gentleman's name right now. Um, he wrote about food and culture and so forth for quite a while. How yeah, to Change Your Mind, episode two. Yeah, episode two deals with psilocybin. It's a great understanding of of, of understanding the macro mm-hmm. dose. And, and for 80 per, 80% of people who do a macro dose, um, it's one of the seminal and most important and best experiences of their lives. 20% have a slightly darker experience. But of that 20%, 60%, within six months say it, it was hard, but it was very, very beneficial. So the, the overall uh, favorability and benefit of the macrodose experience is, is very, very high. The one thing that needs to really happen with the macrodosing experience is you got to be like, you got to be honest with yourself. We live in some pretty fucking crazy times. A lot of pretty fucking crazy stuff has happened to people as you get some years on you. And, if you sense that you've got some skeletons in your closet, if you've got some trauma, but you feel a calling towards these therapies, these medicines, um, just do it in a supported environment. If you've had a pretty, you know, some bends along the way, but you're not, you don't really feel broken or too damaged, you can, you can do it yourself. You know, you can put yourself on a macrodose experience. Scene and setting are very important. Music is important. Um, you want to be in a familiar space. You want to be in a safe space. Um, you might want to have just somebody nearby who n- is kind of just there, knows what's happening. If you need somebody to squeeze your hand or, or put a hand on your chest or something like that, that can be very kind of helpful and beneficial. But the the overall um, favorable outcomes of the macrodose experience is extraordinarily high, extraordinarily high. So that's kind of understanding the way the microdose works in relationship to the macrodose. Yeah, and you were saying about how some of those that have those dark experiences still experience something incredibly beneficial. My very first psilocybin experience was terrifying, but by the end of it, mm. something was pulling me towards it so much. I knew that there was something in there that contained some very deep-rooted healing just from the visions that I got from that first experience that I knew I had to continue to pursue it. And it became almost an obsession because of the rapid healing experiences that was occurring. I no longer have to utilize mushrooms anymore. I spent about almost three years doing these very high doses, and I feel like I've come away with very profound revelations. So just a little note for your listeners, if they are curious about it but haven't done it. Um, at both the microdosing and macrodosing level, um, psilocybin is, and especially if you're talking a macrodose for your first one, better done during the morning, daytime hours, Better done on an empty stomach, so you don't have any kind of interference. Better done with a big glass of lemon water. A macro dose at nighttime can get kind of weird and kind of dark, uh, unless you're in like a, a group setting and there's the music and supportive and so forth. So, um, you know, this is uh, this is part of the scene and setting. There's some great uh, playlists that are available now. There's a guy called uh, um, Eastern Forest who's got whole playlists on Spotify, five, six hour long playlists for these experiences. Um, I just happened to have found out about them as I was kind of contemplating doing a macro experience because I feel like I need a little reset myself. Um, but just kind of like the, the thing about the, the more terrifying, but yet both beneficial experience, a lot of that can be brought on by the time of day. Mm. What other food is in your stomach? Some other kind of complications. So better done in the morning, um, scene and setting, uh, have a playlist, no ringers, no kids, you know, no, you know, other noises. If you can minimize them, if you've got an eye blindfolds on and a good set of uh, earphones, all that can help reduce the chances of this kind of interference and static on the line or these, um, the negative aspects really jumping mm. in. Now, before we move away from the macro dosing, what is your understanding of the quote unquote contact experiences that people have? It's 
varies from everything from angels, spiritual experiences. Mine was what I understand as my higher self. But there's also been other intelligences seeming that have reached out and communicated in different ways. And I would love your thoughts on what this is, if you think this is just part of our consciousness that is communicating with us. I have the understanding that our consciousness is connected to everything, and our mind is extremely advanced, more advanced than we could ever understand, and is capable of things beyond our wildest imagination. And that possibly the key to understanding everything in the universe is by going within. But that being said, this could be anything that we are connecting to. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. I mean, I, I think it's imagined and very real and definitely happens. You know, what's that line from Jesus? In my father's kingdom, there are many mansions. I think what happens is that um, there's a multitude of veils of consciousness that that contain us in the world we're in so we're in we're we you and i are right now are existing in a agreed upon and perceived veil of consciousness but it's just because we are conditioned that way that we have this veil okay you take these plant substances and those veils dissolve and other veils become perceptible or penetrable, or interdimensional, extraterrestrial. Um, so all those experiences are very legitimate and very real. Um, I believe in them 100%. I think the wisdom and messages and insights that we get from them can be critical in advancing our lives and de deepening and developing us as intelligent, compassionate, loving human beings. You know, the vast I mean, honestly, I've sold, I, I mean, we're, we're approaching 10,000 total units mm. sold. Okay. And I have been told on just one occasion that it made me an angrier and more unhappy person on microdosing. Mm. Um, I, and, and it was, I was actually from a person who, um, she was, uh, you know, there's a phenomena here in uh, Texas of some of these old liberals who um, feel so deceived by the direction that modern liberalism has moved and their association with pharma and so forth. And so this was a woman in her late sixties who was just so angry at everything in the world. So when she told me microdosing made her angry, I'm like, <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> everything she said. So, you know, the vast, the vast, vast majority of people come away from these experiences with greater insights and greater benefits and greater understandings. And, they, it doesn't interfere with your religion. In fact, it can deepen your religion. It can deepen your connection to God and spirit and, and what your faith of choice is almost always. If that is based in truth, if your belief system is fundamentally authentic and truthful to you, the psychedelic experience will reinforce that and will put a sense of wind and momentum in your sails that you're on the right track. Um, if your belief system is inauthentic to you or not in sync with your higher nature or higher self, it could be a little more shocking and kind of redirect you um, to help put you on the right path. So all these experiences that you had under psychedelic, I think they're very real. I think they're very legitimate. And I think the more that you um, include that wisdom into then your everyday life and how you're going to redirect and amend your life is, is really the way to work with these kind of sacred medicines. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the microdosing end. If someone is just starting out microdosing, what are some of the tells that they should look for that there is something beneficial happening? Great. Okay. So on the website, brainsupreme.co, we just, we just put it's, it's succinct and tight, but we have an eight part um, video coaching course. It's a free download. You just register for it. And it's not like a click funnel where you get one week, the next week, the next week. I give it to you all at once so you can binge on it and you can learn. And I go through basically everything you kind of want to ever needed to know about microdosing and so forth. But I'm, I love talking about this, so I'm happy to go through it again. So look, as we said, microdosing is at the sub 10% of a macro dose. It's done on some type of protocol at brain supreme we recommend a five days on two days off protocol so you've got five days in a row 
And your whole, when you first begin microdosing, what you're going for is the definition of your personal sweet spot. And your sweet spot is perceptible, non-intoxicating, non-hallucinatory. But it should be perceptible. You should perceive some uptick in your performance, life performance, whether that's empathy, energy, focus, um, stress compartmentalization, effective sleep, libido, intimacy, uh, a reduction of negative affect in terms of mind chatter and, and, um, and negative self-talk. It should be perceptible at the 5, 10, 15, maybe 20% level. And that, that's for like pretty well-adjusted, high-performing individuals. I'll often hear from some of my veterans, PTSD, people who suffer from significant trauma, that the microdosing has made them feel 50, 60, 70% better. I've heard stories of suicide ideation disappearing. Mm-hmm. I've heard um, stories of night terrors where some veterans would literally attack their spouse in their sleep a few times a year. Those have gone away. Some real tremendous success stories along the way. But for most people, if you can get like a 10% bump in your overall life of efficacy, like that's quite extraordinary. The other thing that I say about microdosing is it's kind of like an expensive supplement that you notice. You know, I'm very into health. I'm very into fitness. Um, I go to naturopathic doctors and nutritionists and I spend a lot of money on premium supplements. And it's always for me, like, you know, I think they work. I hope they work. Everybody else got sick. I didn't get so sick for 54. I'm looking and feeling good, blah, blah, blah. But it's not really like perceptible. When you take, when you sprinkle a hundred or 200 milligrams of, of high quality psilocybin into your supplement routine, you're like, Oh, I know what I'm paying for. So what I tell people, it's an expensive supplement, a slightly expensive supplement that you notice and you know it's working. So when you begin, well, I have this expression. So if you're unfamiliar, uninitiated in psychedelics with, with microdosing, the first step is to demystify. You just want to demystify the process. Okay. Limp in, start with half a capsule, start with one capsule, just, just demystify, reduce any anxiety. Don't start on a weekday. Don't start when you've got meetings and pressure and business. Start on an off day in the morning. Empty stomach is always better. Water with lemon juice is kind of the way to go because it helps the conversion process. You eat psilocybin, it hits your liver, it converts to psilocin, and then your brain absorbs psilocin. That conversion process is facilitated with vitamin C, citric acid, and so forth. So you kind of combine it with a nice glass of lemon water. It can also be combined with coffee with fats. It's very effective as well. So um that's how to begin the process demystify it limp in one capsule a day in the morning on an empty stomach and you want to just scale your dosage up until you get to that slightly perceptible level where you feel you have more focus more energy and sometimes it can even be like you might even have to think about like yeah you know i think i am feeling a little better and most people scale up to two, maybe three capsules. That tends, everybody's brain is different. It's not based on body weight. It's based on neurological needs. I've got some retired NFL guys and some mixed martial artists who have had a significant amount of brain trauma. They have to microdose at five, 600, 700 milligrams. That's a recreational dose almost for a lot of people. For them, that's a microdose. I have some other people, large, athletic, accomplished, you know, um, 100 milligrams, one capsule, like that's my sweet spot. That works. Just keep pushing your dosage upward until you get to that perceptible level. The general rule is two to three capsules a day. You can also scale up over the course of the week. You can do, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with one capsule, and then you can go Thursday, Friday with two capsules or days four and five with two capsules. But once you find your sweet spot, that's kind of where you're working it. So the vast majority of Brain Supreme customers are at around two capsules a day, and some of them will then scale up to three capsules on days four and five. So that's the supplement protocol. Five days on, two days off. The first time you begin with the product, do it on an off day. Better in the morning, better on an empty stomach, better with a glass of lemon water, or it can also be very effective coffee with fats. We have, a, uh, we have kind of a modified bulletproof recipe on the website. Um, that's how I do my microdosing and coffee with fats. So once you've done the supplement protocol for your first few weeks or your first month and you, you familiarize yourself with the process, now you can start to personalize. So what I do these days, is I do performance dosing. So I have some samples here. This is our athlete protocol. This is 100 milligrams of active with then natural performance boosters, testosterone boosters, good for men and women. And this is our flagship genius formula. This is our most nootropic formula, 100 milligrams of active blended with um, 
uh, amino acids and herbs and so forth for neurocognition and brain performance. On my, I do performance dosing. So uh, first thing I do is um, I make the lunches, I get the kids off the school and so forth. And about 35, 45 minutes before I hit the gym, I brew a bulletproof coffee up. So coffee with fat and some other, but I do the brain supreme version. So we add some other nutrients to it as well. And I take my slightly higher microdose. I will do um, sometimes two genius and one athlete or sometimes two genius and two athlete or some combination of that. So it's a sl- I'm at four, three to 400 milligrams, which is a higher dose. I do that twice a week, about 45 minutes before my two hardest workout days, which tend to be Monday and Thursday. That's a more perceptible level of dose. I'm still completely under control, but my energy level peaks. I enter into what I call flow state. My workouts are amazing. And then the benefits of that, you burn the more um, intense time of the microdose off at the gym. And then the benefits of the microdose linger throughout the day and they last for the next two days. And then I go ahead and do it again on Thursday. This is a great protocol for athletes. They'll do one training session a week and then they'll do it on game day. Always start on your training session. Okay. Do a couple training sessions and you can't performance those day after day because you will acclimate to it. So you're going to want to do it one day on and then probably at least two days off and then you can go again and find your performance dosing sweet spot most people it's like 300 to maybe 500 milligrams of active ingredient for me monday is 300 milligrams so three capsules total and then thursday is four capsules 400 milligrams that's my sweet spot my mixed martial artists my jujitsu and and martial art guys they love it because that flow state you almost become predictive um And it's very beneficial. One of the things with psilocybin is that psilocybin is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. This, for me, I think is part of the reason Mm. why people have oral and visual acuity. It's not just the new neural pathways being formed and and, and this kind of neurogenesis. I think there is a reduction of ocular inflammation, inflammation around the eye. And then um, because psilocybin goes through the blood-brain barrier, it reduces um, neurological inflammation, brain in, brain inflammation. So your eyesight and your hearing all get a little better. Now, think about this as an athlete, okay? The difference between like a goal, a basket versus a miss is a tenth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. You're off the rim, you're off the post. So if your visual acuity improves by 1%, you know, how many shots and goals and you know perceptions and catches all get missed by one percent you know a one percent angle so that the tiny little incremental improvements in in uh, oral acuity visual acuity this kind of flow state consciousness can make massive differences in your everyday life and also even think about that with language you know one of the things that you can do with the performance dose is hey uh, I've got a really hard workout on Wednesday and then Saturday I like to go for like a really good hike and everything. And Wednesday we have a staff meeting in the afternoon. So like that's a really good day to peak on. So if you're more um, fluid with your language on those peak days, if your thoughts are firing, if you're two, three, four or five percent better, like these are these are significant gains that will be perceptible to yourself and also your colleagues and and the environment that you work at. Um, I did an experiment uh, the other, just the other day, um, I did a recreational dose on a Saturday of 750 milligrams, um, marveled at the clouds in the afternoon here, um, watched this silly movie with my kids, last, laughed my ass off, went to bed at 1030, woke up at 6 a.m., cleaned the entire kitchen, and then set a new personal best on the Peloton, breathing only through my nose. Like, when is that ever going to happen with a you know, if you drank four or five beers or three glasses of wine, you're going to be off your game. Psilocybin actually, from a performance standpoint is, um, it improves you, you perform at the higher level. So we've got start with supplement dosing, then we've got performance dosing. And once you're really familiar with microdosing, you can just do peak day dosing. You know, you can know that, Hey, um, just on Saturdays or just once a month, I don't, you know, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think I necessarily need it every day. I'm pretty well adjusted. I'm pretty happy. So I'm just going to do it for certain peak days. You define what your sweet spot is, what your kind of peak day sweet spot is. And then you can just use that for big meetings, big trainings, game day, leisure day, whatever it may be. So supplement dosing, five days on, two days off. Performance dosing, usually twice a week, slightly higher dose. Peak day dosing kind of happens at the performance dosing level, but you're just going to do it on those occasions. That's kind of the way to approach microdose. I'm glad you mentioned the inflammation 
aspects and the other health benefits that psilocybin can bring because this is something I've experienced and that has been incredible on, along my journey is, th- first of all, bringing awareness to things I'm doing to myself that aren't unhealthy, then bringing awareness to parts of my body that I didn't notice before that I needed to bring attention mm-hmm. to, and feeling better overall, performing with exercise and those neural pathways, I can honestly say that I grew smarter within a very short amount of time by utilizing this incredible medicine. So it not only has that effect in the brain, it has these effects with our health, at least at the least bringing awareness to things so that we can make the changes, but it also seems to have, like you said, effects on our eyes and inflammation. So there's something really interesting that happens with microdosing, macrodosing and microdosing. I, I heard um, a podcast on uh, a psilocybin podcast and a guy was talking about, um, and he was, uh, he was like a 22 year old kid at the time. He wasn't particularly conscientious. Um, he ate a shit ton of mushrooms and then he went to McDonald's and he was eating at McDonald's. And this is a kid who had no food consciousness, no society. And this was like, this was now a 40 year old guy who was tremendously self-aware or maybe even younger than that. And he talked about that as he was eating, it dawned on him. What's the history of this food? Who made this food? What was the animal well-being of this food? What was the plant well-being of this food? What are the chemicals on? It blew his mind. It blew his mind. It was as if the food was speaking to him and the suffering of that food was speaking to him and it forever changed his life. So like at the macro and the micro level, it just moves you in this beneficial direction. And, And so look for me in this like crazy age that we're living in, it's so important to to have your intuition honed and raised. You have to be able to smell bullshit in this day and age. And then you can't lie to yourself that, that what you want to believe is a rose, but smells like bullshit. You've got to call it as it is, you know? And macro dosing, micro dosing raises your truth awareness. You know, I have this thing. So in the film, Fantastic Fungi, uh, which is about the life and work of the pre-COVIDian Paul Stamets. Uh, it deals a lot. There's a part of the film. It's available on like Prime and Amazon everywhere. It's very, very good. The photography is amazing. Even my little kids at the time enjoyed it because the capture motion photography of these mushrooms exploding. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that it deals with is the mycelial networks, which are the root fibers of the mushrooms, and how they interconnect information through the forest and between the trees. So the trees will use the mushroom mycelial network, which are these huge miles long networks of mushroom root fibers to relay information all throughout the forest, forest of uh, certain pests, certain nutrient deficiencies. They think it can even communicate to the predatory fish, the predatory birds of where to, of what tree needs some salmon guts underneath it because it needs the nutrient. It's amazing. One of the cumulative benefits for six years of microdosing for me has been what I call the etheric mycelial network that I literally feel like from my heart and from my head, I feel fibers go out. And I, I know when I'm in authentic relationship, like my conversation with you right now, I mean, we're like minded. I appreciate you. You've got me on your show. I like what you're about. So, you know, all all the cards are kind of there, but like, I literally feel from my heart and from my head, I feel this etheric connection. And when I'm in conversation that's that authentic and that connected, oh, now I need to give. Now I need to receive. Now I need to be quiet. Now's the time. You know, you understand people and your connection with them at a deeper level, at a kind of um, at this profoundly subtle but, but powerful level that something else is happening. You also know when there's no connection, when you're smelling bullshit and you'll cut it pretty quickly. So I find in this day and age where we're we're so gaslighted, we're so misled, we're so propagandized and manipulated that it's it's an invaluable resource for tuning up your own mind, for tuning up and opening your heart so that the things that make us most human, love, intimacy, 
um, connection, food, community, um, authenticity. You know, they've done these studies on powerful emotions where they were able, I forgot, I read the, I saw a breakdown on the study. I didn't read the study, but they were able to chart and graph um, the energetic um, electrical currents that you produce under different emotional states. And one would probably think that love or maybe, you know, or maybe rage were the most powerful in terms of just what they, how they'd move the needle. But the most powerful emotional state is authenticity. That when you're authentic as a human being, you're your most powerful. And for me, that's really like the cumulative benefit of years of microdosing is that I am so aware when I'm being inauthentic um, that I, I can't do it. I literally, it stops me. And I feel um, infused with vitality when I'm in my authenticity. And it naturally moves me to be a more authentic human being. Right on. Let's talk a little bit about the dark side of the psychedelic movement in general, starting with the flooding of the market of all these different types of products. They have different gummies, and a lot of these are synthetic. A lot of times you're not sure exactly what you are getting. What is your understanding of what's going on with this and what people should look out for? Oh, great, great, great question, and an important question right now. So, um, I, I I don't I don't have a problem with alcohol. Thank God, I never had, but I don't drink alcohol at all. I microdose, and then I will do very, very occasionally a macrodose. Like literally, you know, now with kids and sports and all these things that just don't have six hours or eight hours. So, but I will do I will do recreational dosing levels. So, let's go back to our let's go back to our five thousand. Uh, milligrams heroic dose versus our 100 milligram microdose. Somewhere, depending on your neurological uh, state and perception, perception levels, somewhere between 500 to maybe 1.25 or 1,250 milligrams is the recreational dosage level. I like recreating on mushrooms. It's my favorite way to have some weekend recreation. You feel loving, you feel tuned up. The music is great. Uh, You know, you're perceiving energy. You know, if you're in the right spot or the wrong spot, Uh, nature and clouds are heightened visual acuity, oral acuity. And then you wake up the next day and you feel amazing. You clean the house, you do exercise. I'm a big fan of using uh, microdose, using um, mushrooms from a recreational standpoint. Uh, I've seen it also drastically reduce um, alcohol consumption and what I consider to be social alcoholism. Uh, the part of Texas that I live in, like people drink a lot, mm. much too much. Um, and your judgment gets flawed. It's not good for you. You know, there's, um, there's so much toxins in, uh, wine and beers and hard liquor these days because the trace amounts of glyphosate and other pesticides and so forth. It's just, just not much. You might enjoy it, but there's really, from a biological standpoint, there's really nothing good that you can say about alcohol consumption, unlike psilocybin cons- uh, consumption, which does have um, neurological and biological benefits. So I'm a big fan of that. Now, when it comes to the, the recreational chocolate mushroom space, be very suspicious of getting a bargain mushroom chocolate mm-hmm. bar. You should spend somewhere between 70 to 100 bucks on that chocolate bar. I know that market really well, and that's just what the good ones cost. If you're getting a bar for less than that, I would be a little suspicious. Now, you've got to understand that, that one of those chocolate bars that might have four or five grams total, that's the equivalent to four people going out for a night of cocktails. You know, if you have a chocolate bar with four grams total and everybody eats one row of chocolates and has a gram, you know, for 20 bucks, everybody just is going to have a great time, feel great the next day. And it's a fraction of what going out for beers or cocktails would cost. You know, so even if you think you're spending a lot for that $80 mushroom bar, it's so much more cost effective than a night of cocktails. You know, Mm. it's the equivalent of like a great bottle of wine that's going to do more for more people than just a single bottle of wine. So think of it that way. And the other thing is that the cheap bars will often use uh, THC oil because when you ingest cannabis, it hits your liver and it processes much more like a psychedelic than it does like traditional smoked cannabis. 
Um, it's a different feeling. And for the uninitiated, they can think they're having a psychedelic mushroom experience, but they've just eaten cannabis mm. oil. And that can often carry or heavier toxic loads. Now, the other thing that we've got to understand is that the three-letter agencies, um, they let the pharmaceutical industry literally get away with murder, okay? There's more people injured on a daily basis by Tylenol than there are in the history of psychedelics. So if you see a mushroom bar scare that happens where four people got sick and so forth, yeah, I get it. It's terrible. But it's like it's not at the epidemic levels that um, – our typical average over-the-counter pharmaceutical product is, or especially prescription pharmaceutical product. It's not even close. But that being said, look to buy a higher quality brand, look to probably spend somewhere above $70 for that recreational chocolate bar. Look that the packaging seems crisp. Like I have to say, like most of the mushroom chocolate companies these days, like they're very well packaged and, pre and presented. Like their packaging looks really good. Like they've had given a lot of thought to it. So, and then the other thing that I would say is that, especially if you're adult, the whole kind of weedy, shroomy, drippy, you know, all that kind of shit, like that's usually a sign that they're going for like a lower quality, certain demographic. So if you pick up a chocolate bar and you get it from somebody who's reputable, you know, and it has a certain kind of elegant look to it, you're most likely going to be really fine. The other thing that you could do that I tell everybody is microdose everything before you recreationally dose it. Because the other thing, you know, look, I'm 54 right now. And when I, on the occasions that I do party, which are few and far between, I'm the most interesting, boring person like you've ever met. Like I literally like to, for me, an exciting night is we sauna and cold plunge from eight to nine 30 and then go to bed. <laughs> Right on. That's kind of that's the, that's why I have friends over and we saw it and we cold plunge and then everybody leaves and we keep our clothes on. And then everybody leaves and goes to bed like it's, it sleeps great, wakes up the next day and smashes a workout. So um, but the the thing is, I always want emotional freedom. Like I don't mind partying with somebody, but I don't want to be responsible for you. So if I've got this new chocolate bar and I hear it's great, everybody says it's great, but I've never done it before and I eat a gram, and you eat a gram, I'm going to be thinking about how that gram is interacting with you if I'm a caring and decent person, and it's going to affect my buzz or my high. So I always tell people, look, set yourself up for success and emotional freedom. So if you do get a chocolate bar or some, some gummies, microdose it. Take, you know, take about what would be 250, 300, maybe 400 milligrams worth, okay? You should notice something. It should be pleasant. If your stomach gets upset and you're running to the toilet or you feel a toxic load and you, and you get a headache, I don't have a quality product, okay? You just learned it's going to pass rather quickly. Flush yourself with water, with lemon juice. Get a shot of high-quality apple cider vinegar. I would no longer recommend Bragg's as well because mm -hmm. Bragg's has not signed on to the appeal pledge. So for the others of you who don't know, um, Bill Gates, He's invested a lot of money in a company called APEEL, and this is a new supposedly environmental coating that's put on fruit and vegetables that extends their shelf life. They literally never rot. But given with the way that guy can get away with murder, literally, um, uh, the appeal label has been able to skirt FDA regulation and investigation, so no one really knows what's in, and you can still keep the organic label. So unfortunately, Bragg, apple cider vinegar, um, has not signed on to the appeal pledge. So find maybe a more local vinegar, apple cider vinegar. So if you do feel lousy, a small shot of apple cider vinegar in with some water, um, put a pinch of quality salt, um, Celtic, Himalayan, or Baja gold or sea salt under the tongue, drink some lemon water. It should flush you with some, uh, some, some proper minerals, uh, electrolytes, and help kind of cleanse the system, and you should feel fine shortly after. But microdose whatever you want to do at the recreational level, especially if you want to do it at the therapeutic level. You should always do a microdose first. Um, and when mushrooms have set, upset your stomach, it's usually a sign that the grow medium had some level of bacterial contamination, and uh, it gets pulled up into the fruiting body. And then when you eat the fruiting body, you feel a little bit lousy and so forth afterwards. It tends to pass, but it's usually a sign of very well-grown and clean products that um, you don't get an upset stomach. For instance, I've I've literally, like going on 10,000 sales, I've never gotten to complain with Brain Supreme products of, of an upset mm -hmm. stomach. So my recreational cautions, to answer your question kind of concisely, 
it, it should it should be a quality product. It should not be cheap. You should get it from a reputable source who you know gives you their pledge that they've done it. And then you should microdose it before you recreational or macro or macro dose it. And then you'll pretty much be fine. You mentioned big pharma earlier and. Paul Stamets, who those that are not familiar, he was part of the wonderful uh, mushroom documentary. I forget the name of it right now. Fantastic, Fantastic fun, fun guy. guy. Fantastic yeah, fun and guy. he was a, a great spokesperson person until I recently heard that he is teaming up with Big Pharma to reduce it, vaccine hesitancy. Is that right? So... If you go to the most recent Joe Rogan with Paul Stamets, which is probably now a good four months ago, um, he's been on four times, I believe. So it's his most recent one. It was almost like he was a Manchurian candidate. Mm. It stutters. I actually personally thought, uh, listen, I don't want to speculate too hard because the guy, the cumulative net benefit of his life is pretty spectacular. And the fact that he's shitting on his own legacy like this just kind of blows my mind. But it's kind of um, consistent with, Northern California, Oregon, and Washington State aging hippies. Something happened to these people where they lost their fucking minds yeah. during COVID. And uh, they sided with the pharmaceutical industry. And part of that exposes the kind of um, atheistic, hedonistic um, core values of the hippie movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, like when I was a child, I thought the hippie thing was kind of cool and interesting, you know, fuck the man, the kind of hegemony, uh, oppressiveness, racism of our society they were reacting to. And I thought it was kind of a necessary reaction. I've since come to learn that it was highly orchestrated and manipulated by the CIA and other <laughs> agencies like that. Um, but I always thought there was kind of a nobility in it. But underneath that, there was a real sense of selfishness and hedonism. I want to smoke what I want. I want to fuck what I want. I want to live my life what I want. And I want to do it all kind of selfishly. And now that those people are octogenarian, 70s and 80s and so forth, that same selfishness is there, but it correlates as you're a germ bomb, your kid's a germ bomb, they're going to kill me and keep them the fuck away from me. And that was able to get contorted and manipulated in this kind of matrix of propaganda to then align with Fauci and align with the pharmaceutical industry. And I think Stamets, unfortunately, fell into that. And I don't think it's that fair for me to speculate on it too much. But the first 45 minutes of his most recent Joe Rogan podcast, it was as if he was a Manchurian candidate. He seemed unnatural. His lisp came back, uh, his um, stutter came back uh, more so than I've ever seen it in a public speaking arena. And he was basically talking about how they're using agaricon mushroom extracts to reduce vaccine hesitancy because if you take the agaricon mushroom extract at the same time that you get one of the jabs uh you're you're far less likely to have a a vaccine adverse event or reaction so he's using mushrooms now to open up the wonderful possibility so more people will get vaccinated and they'll have less of a reaction oh boggles the fucking mind yeah and rogan i could tell I've listened to Rogan for a long time. I could tell he didn't want to push too deeply into that to take this, this show completely sideways because um, he likes to kind of keep everything you know pleasant on his show, investigative or pleasant. But he simply said to him, but if the agaricon mushroom can boost the immune system, uh, why do you need the vaccine? And Stamets kind of stammered through this and so forth. It was very unnatural. And I won't buy any of his products anymore. Yeah. I mean, you crossed the line for me. You cross the line. I have a very, I have a very simple worldview that I think I, I don't like to proselytize, but I think the, I think the adoption of this worldview will help you. It wasn't that hard to get COVID right. It really wasn't. If you kind of know a little bit about you know, our own history, the history of the CDC and the history of the C, the, the um, pharmaceutical industry, if you know a little bit of history about Fauci, if you know a little history about Bill Gates, these are not the people we should be taking health advice mm -hmm. from. It wasn't that hard to get it right. Now, so if you're a, a spiritual leader, a religious leader, an organizational leader, a business leader, a governmental leader, um, a leader in the natural space, in the mushroom space, but you've gotten COVID wrong, you might have something wise to offer, but there's too many wise people, courageous people, people of integrity who got COVID right. I'm just going to follow them. So <laughs> I look at the world that way. If you got COVID wrong, 
I got no interest in you anymore. I'm sorry. It's, you know, you might be brilliant, but like there's a lot of brilliant people who also have integrity. And this was the seminal issue of our generation, of our time, and maybe in human history. And if you've got that wrong, I just don't have the time of day for you. So, and that's the, for me, the real tragedy of Paul Stamets. You're talking about a guy who between mushrooms, mushroom awareness, immune system, what he did with bees and, and helping discover some of the fungus that's, that's being transmitted through bees. And, um, but he backed off when it comes to 5G and some of the other things that are affecting bees, but that he shit on his own legacy like that just blows my mind, man. It, does. it just blows my mind. But it's, um, it's also a real massive problem with the aging liberal mm. community. They've all been propagandized to a point where um, I find them to be illogical and irrational all so often and oddly anti-human. Are you concerned at all about Big Pharma infiltrating the psychedelic mushroom space? I know there's a lot more interest in it, that they are attempting to utilize it in a pharmaceutical space in different in different aspects, but... To what degree? I I don't I haven't really done any research into it, but I'd love to get your thoughts into that. So, um, to think even for a second that the world's most corrupt, historically corrupt business institutions ever, ever in the history of the world, we're talking about. I think over thirty nine billion dollars in fines over the last twenty five years, more than all other. Um, national and international business and fines altogether is what the pharmaceutical industry has paid. To think that the people who have fucked everything up, let us completely astray, are suddenly going to get this issue correct, you're completely fooling yourself. Um, I think the psychedelic space is done and dusted when pharma takes it over. Uh, I would say stay in the alternate spaces with trusted and reputable people and do it yourself. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not even like concerned about it. Like when they come, it's over because they're going to, they're going to synthesize it. They're going to commodify it. They're going to regulate it. You're going to have to go to their schools and their information to get educated about it. And like, I mean, look, man, past this prologue, the people who have gotten everything wrong aren't going to be the ones that get the next issue right. A hundred percent. Adam, this was fantastic, yeah. and we have a great announcement for the audience. If any of you are interested in trying out this wonderful product, we are now a new affiliate. You can get 15% off with promo code FKN15, which we should have set up by this time this episode airs, but I'll let Adam tell you a little bit more about that and anything else that you'd like to close with today. Well, it was a great conversation. I appreciate it immensely. Um, so yes, um, FKN15, and we set that up immediately. In fact, I think my guy Perfect. already has it set up. So that'll be a 15%, that'll be a 15% discount. I want to incentivize that discount that it's going to, it's going to be live for a month within the show airing. And then there'll be a new discount because you'll be an affiliate and so forth. So if you want to act on it, the other thing too with our business is we're going to get to 10,000 monthly subscribers. Um, and then we're going to cap it from a standpoint of quality and control um, that, that's just where we're at. So we're, we're about a, we're, there's still time. There's about a third of the way there. I never like to hard sell anybody, but if you try the product and you enjoy the product, think about the auto renewal because in a day, not too far away, we are going to kind of have to have to cap it with our kind of member subscriber list that we go for. And I mean, look, that's it. You know, I, um, if I have a hundred clients, 98% of them are going to are going to react favorably to the product. Oh, the one thing I wanted to mention, if you're on an antidepressant, an SSRI or SNRI, there is about a 50% chance that your receptors in your brain might be blocked and you won't perceive psilocybin at the macro or micro level. You can effectively scale down in a very responsible and supported kind of setting and be honest with yourself and get a practitioner who can support you. You can scale down and often replace with uh, with microdosing. I should have added that. We do have a coaching course that's up on the website. So if you want to learn more, develop your understanding, you can always download the coaching course. It comes in all in once. You can binge watch, binge watch it. I think it's about 34 minutes of total running time, eight different video courses that we give. And they're just quick little lectures. It's a lot of the same information that was given in this program. But, you know, I, I consider 
microdosing um, a, almost a biological, neurological, and spiritual necessity for these crazy times in this day and age that we live in. It allows me to function better on less sleep. It allows me to compartmentalize stress. And it allows me and so many clients to operate at a, a higher level of kind of optimization and performance than I've ever experienced uh, before. So I love what I'm doing. I'm very proud of what I'm doing. Um, I can be reached at the website, brain supreme. Um, uh, actually, Adam at the brain supreme.com. That's the best way to reach me. Um, I'm always happy to. I reply to email messages almost instantaneously, but I do it voice. So it might be like a little humorous kind of interpretation that needs to happen, but I like to get back to people very quickly. Excellent. Adam, thank you so much. I love what you're doing. Great product. And I'd love to speak with you again in the future, get some more updates on everything. And we'll have the links and everything needed in the description if you guys are interested in the product. Until next time, everyone, have a wonderful evening. We will talk again tomorrow. We'll see y'all then. Thank you so much. We live in an incredible age of information. More and more, we're discovering that we've been lied to and misled about much of our human history. Corey Hughes is providing profound revelations about World War I, World War II, the JFK assassination, Martin Luther King's assassination, and much, much more on his new substack, Bloody History. Subscribe now for as little as $5 monthly. Just click that link right in the description to get started now and learn about our true history.